Patty Hayridge. And he returned with real to our screen from David this past week. Please give it up for the real sister, Chris Burry. You can still keep cheering. So I'm going to throw the floor open directly to the people here. So if you want to ask questions, get your hand up and I will come around to you. So ask away then. Who's first? Right, right through that side of the room. Question for Chris. It's Ellen for you, my friend. You did, did I see you about so five minutes ago? Yeah, my journey. Oh, yeah. You could have told us the way. <laughs> 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 Century ships, captains, you and the captain, yeah, yeah, yeah. concubine, yeah, yeah, yeah. all that nonsense. Yeah, yeah. Sorry? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that hurts. <laughs> um, well, the, pro the producer of the young ones was uh, uh, a man called Paul Jackson, and he, who was the original producer of Red Dwarf. He was the man, really. Without him. I would never, I wouldn't be here today. He was the man who uh, first saw me at the comedy store and he produced the Jasper Carrot Show in 1983 that gave me my first proper television break. So, and obviously things like The Young Ones and um, uh, Black Hour, Only Fool, uh, um, uh, The Young Ones and, and um, Not The Nine O'Clock News and all those shows were, were the sort of happening comedies at the time and Paul Jackson was on the Young Ones stable, and, and John Lloyd, who eventually produced Spitting Image, was uh, uh, the producer of Not Like Got News. So it was that sort of pool of, of comedy, really, that um, I was fortunate enough to be uh, spotted uh, when I was doing impersonations and things. So, so yeah, Paul, Paul saw me and, and got me into Karis Lib, which, and uh, Rob and Doug were script editors on that, script writers on that, and they I got to know them, and so they considered me for things they were doing, and, and then of course Red Wolf came along, so... Right, so that's a dumb that's story. That's that nasty movie. Black Adam, yes, 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 yeah. Um, so yeah, I hope that covers it. Next question. <laughs> We're up here towards a minute. If you could cross over with any show, or any other show, what would it be? Okay, is that... I can't see what you're Is that for, for, for me? Oh. Question for me, that? Oh, am I not oh. in the Big Bang Theory? I'll just say that anyway. <laughs> I think I could just be looking through a window frame or something. Just just be my head. <laughs> <laughs> well, that would be, be window cleaning if I just look through. I'm happy with that. I'm fine. <laughs> uh, crossover... Well, someone suggested this morning uh, that uh, maybe Red Dwarf should, should meet Doctor Who. Oh, <laughs> With William Harper. <laughs> Might be difficult, but... Uh, no, yeah, there are interesting, within the sort of science fiction um, realm, you know, there, there are some interesting potential crossovers, but, uh, but yeah, no, I'd, I'd like to... Uh, you know, someone else suggested uh, Red Dwarf and, and the British Empire. Um, <laughs> so that would be quite tricky for me. It's a uh, big workload there. But yeah, I, I would like to see maybe um, Red Dwarf and, and Doctor Who together. And a 
question here yeah, from the front. Yes, I have two questions from, well, one from Chris and then one from Holly. For Chris, do you get a lot of people coming up to you going, Shredded? <laughs> <laughs> Not as well as that. <laughs> <laughs> but yes. Like, yeah, I'm sort of my mind a miles away on a, on a train on a platform, and suddenly someone goes speak. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just, please one day. Um, but yeah, it's either sort of speak or uh, Colin, Colin, <laughs> um, or Rima, yeah, that sort of stuff. So yeah, you, you, look, it's, it's part of the territory, yeah. and um, obviously I get a bit of that. Um, for her, I guess, what does it feel like? Like, does it not feel weird being just ahead on a screen when you're playing the role? No, because I, the rest of me oh, is I'm there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 like, I don't know. No, it's not like I wasn't like, you know, the, almost like 18 months before I was a secretary and I was just sitting at a desk, so it wasn't that difficult. All that different, I mean. Yeah. So, um, I wasn't trained in the theatre, darling. So I was happy to sit there and just have the, just have the um, camera pointed at me. If I'd had to have walked anywhere, I'd probably gone, oh, I can't do that. Easier to go. I haven't been taught how to walk anywhere. <laughs> Thank you, sorry. <laughs> um, do you know if there's any plans to bring back Holly in Mentor? That's for me, isn't it? Well, I do know. So, oh, you can answer it then. <laughs> not in series 11. Four? <laughs> I can see phones coming out. <laughs> online. You could ask Norman. Four. Well, we'll move on. A question here at the front. <laughs> Who had the hand up? Who had the baby on? Question, but is there any episode you liked in particular, either because it was fun to act in or because of the plot? Um, yeah, I think you're right, it is a, a question. Um, it's sometimes difficult to pick out the shows that were not so fun to, to act in. Um, I think Series three marooned was a was a, a good one to be involved in because it was sort of just like a nice two hander really once uh, um, Bobby and Danny had gone <laughs> and I wished them away like that but uh, Craig and I just it was just a nice little sort of two hander with the you know the cattlewood chest and the you know the eunuch and all that you know, some of the great eunuch and all that sort of stuff so yeah it, it was. Um, it was good fun. But of course, um, the first appearance of Ace was, was great fun for me as well. Uh, you know, obviously the two rimmers together, sort of um, snakehead rimmer, and, um, and Ace was uh, quite, quite interesting. I'll smoke with you, kid, but I'll be back for breakfast. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so that was, uh, that was quite good. Um, and, and, you know, more recently in, in, in Series 10, you know, uh, Trojan was quite a good one to meet, meet um, a brother, you know. Um, yeah, look, all Red Dwarf is, is, is sometimes testing to, to shoot, but it, it's, it's always good fun and, and, you know, it's great to work with a, with a posse. Um, so, uh, yeah, as I say, it's, I always quote that Stasis Leak was one show I, I never completely got my head around. <laughs> So, uh, so maybe that was slightly less fun. She waxed uh, the, the meltdown was great fun. Yeah. All those fantastic, uh, you know, um, lookalikes and soundalikes. That was that was a good laugh. So yeah, look, it, I could go on for hours about which ones were were, were, were my favourite. But I would pick Marooned and Dimension Jump as two off the off the record, well, off the immediate thoughts there. Um, I would say those as well. And meltdown, and meltdown. Yeah, that Gandhi they had was actually the second Gandhi. The first Gandhi was a lot older than that one <laughs> and couldn't get out of the taxi. <laughs> <laughs> well, they told him he was going to have to do press-ups, so they just, sort of, they just sent him away again. <laughs> I don't think I'd be allowed, you know, the show would be allowed to get away with that now. Sort of, Gandhi, give me 50 or whatever it was. You know, um, I don't know, I'm sure there'll be some sort of hovering thing over us going, no, we don't, we don't no, like no, that. that's not right. Anymore. <laughs> um, anyway, let's let's 
charge it on to the next. We have an aptly dressed person to ask you a question. saying this morning there was talk about it but um, it's I don't know I just think trying to get it written with the original writers is proving a bit of a problem because they, they do want to I understand the fact they want to hold on to it and don't want to say look anyone can write it so off you go and do it you know uh, get it back on TV I one of the original writers is keen to try and keep hold of it and and, um, and do it at some point but um, you know well, you never, never say never, so let's keep our fingers crossed for the future. Thank you. And the second aptly addressed person with a question. And then... uh, um, see you when you first like started in Red War, did you think after like almost 30 years it would still be this huge cult classic that people are generating so much hate for? Like, how do you feel to be part of that? Well, no, when, when we were fixing the, um, the chip, you know, the, the, when the, the sort of the accident happened, you know, when we were fixing the uh, dispensing machine, Lister and I around that corner, what he was doing was, you know, I, 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 just, I just never ever thought that we'd still be here 29 years later, um, still doing Red Dwarf. I really, I, when I saw the first series go out, I was amazed at, you know, I said, well, look, this, this is either no one will watch this and it will be pulled immediately, or it's going to develop slowly a, a cult following and it will go on for a long time. But no, I thought maybe four or five series, but not 28 years. Um, but, you know, it's great to still be doing it. It's been the, the backbone of my life, career, you know, uh, and I'll now keep doing it <laughs> for as long as I can. And I think the other guys are in the same same book. Another question here for Jim. Just a question for Chris. Uh, if there was to be a spit and image revival, would you be up for it? Do you think a show like that can fly in 2016? And are there any current figures that you can hear and think, I could do a pretty good approximation of that in a satirical vein? <laughs> <laughs>
so he would be quite good. <laughs> so yeah, obviously, you know, because I like mimicry, if I'd sort of worked up a few, uh, of course, there was the one and only, what's his name, uh, William Hay, you yeah, know, that's a way of talking like that. Um, they all resigned to quit now. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you're, if you're an impersonator like me and you're sort of mid-late 50s, you know, you either resign or pass away. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, 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 I Ronnie Corbett. God rest his soul, you know, and now I'm not going to do the joke about the chap who, uh, nah. um, And you may like to go, you may not, you know, the great Paul Daniels, of course, you know, uh, passed away within a week, so that, that's the sort of the tricky life, you know, for, of, of, of an impressionist. So, um, so I'm sort of slightly glad to be out of that business. Um, <laughs> someone asked Katty a question. <laughs> <laughs> question for your man here. What's your favourite series of Red Boy? That's the both of you. Uh, probably three, I think. Uh, three because I was new into it and uh, I like all those ones. By five they were going, I don't think we can think of much to write for an hour. <laughs> so maybe three and four. <laughs> Just personally. Um, my favourite is 12. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> no, my my favourite is... My well, it goes back to the question that we, um, we, 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 we answered earlier on. I, I don't think... Uh, I think they all have their, you know, ball marks. But I think four or five, when we were just getting into our stride, um, the early Shepparton shows, as, I, as we you call them, you know, we, we moved down to the, the studios in, in Shepparton. Um, and we were just, you know, the show was by then kind of almost fully developed and, you know, Robin Doug's creativity was sort of running wild and, uh, you know, we kind of knew the characters well. Um, so I, I'd probably say around there, but they've all been enjoyable. And a question here? Hi, and um, question for both of you. How much ad living was there on the show and how far? Uh, by the time it's recorded, there's not too much ad living, unless something goes wrong, and then we all just start pissing about. <laughs> <laughs> I always remember, I thought there was a bit of ad living during the. Um, uh, pissing about, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, there's a piss about person desire, life. and then we record it. Yeah, <laughs> comedian life thoughts, no thanks, that one. I thought that was a bit of improvisation. That was chameleon life. When you're a bit of a hippie, yes. you're just a facilitator. But we can't do that. Let's put that on the back burner. Thank you, David. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think Unfortunately, it stands for, so we can't use that. Um, <laughs> we didn't do any pissing about it. That was very finely scripted material. Um, but no, Hattie's right. We, we can rehearse it and um, improvise. Um, and, you know, Robert, Craig, and Danny, and to a certain extent me, although I'm probably the least good at it. Um, uh, 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 but Robert and uh, Craig can do some uh, very, you know, uh, fluent uh, improvisers and are very funny. And Danny, as I say, as well. But, um, and, and, and if it fits in with the scene of the character, then it, it, it goes into what they call the, 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 the camera script, and it's recorded. Um, and you know, by the time we'd done series four or five, you know, and beyond, we kind of knew the characters so well that you could do that sort of thing. Um, but as I say, once it, as Hattie said, once it gets into a, it's rehearsed and in the camera script, you've got to lock it down there because obviously the cameras and the uh, vision mixer and the sound people need to know, you know, where it's going to go on the evening uh, with, with the audience. So, uh, so yeah, there's a bit of improv in, in rehearsal. Um, but yeah. Obviously, we've got to lock it down on the night. And we have a question here from your lady in the middle. Hi, and um, since the kids have been watching it with my dad, and as you said, it's got quite a cult following, but what do you think makes Red Dwarf and the characters special as to both of you? Um, I think they're kind of lovable characters, really, and they've got lots of flaws and <laughs> um, that. Um, People can recognise themselves in, even if they're being 
I mean, sometimes everyone's a brimmer on their day, aren't they? <laughs> so it's like sometimes I think, oh shit, I'm being a bit brimmer. I am every day. But I just think they're great characters and, and, and a lot of heart and soul went into the writing. It wasn't, oh, this is what people are going to want. Um, Rob and Doug really loved every word they wrote and everything they wrote about. So. And they were all sci-fi and comedy fans. And, uh, I think it creates its own little world as well. Mm. Um, so, uh, you know, it, it's, it has an enduring appeal in that, in that respect. Um, and because it's a, it's set so many years in the future, in, 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 in its you know in this in this sort of world eons away from anywhere else, it seems you know you can have it just has its own life, and so it, it, it kind of dates slightly. It doesn't really date as badly as say you know um, are you being served or, or, or um, you know uh, anything that's set up you know in in Southwest London or, or wherever. Um, you know, any classic British sitcom is, is immediately of its time, you know, whereas, although obviously Red Dwarf dates because of the fact we don't quite look the same because it started 28 years ago, um, you know, generally the, what happens on board the ship and, and the, our adventures, you know, are, are, are a little bit more um, aging proof, if you see what I mean, um, than other shows. So. And yeah, the, the, the sort of amazing creativity of, of Rob and Doug, and now Doug, um, that has just, uh, you know, he's a genius, and uh, the bottom line is the script, and you know, I just feel very fortunate to have been part of it. We have a question from another aptly dressed person in the front. Yeah. Uh, Flibble! <laughs> Where have you been? Don't spend up the way. <laughs> um, given that there have been sort of various reincarnations and changes in tone and theme, as well as sort of the split between Rob and Doug over the years and things, have you felt that there's been a distinct leap from one series to another in terms of how you felt about your characters? Or has it all been felt very much like you keep falling into the same set of shoes each year? It's quite difficult to, to answer, to, to listen to a question by a man dressed as a penguin. <laughs> <laughs> Think how it feels asking the question. <laughs> with, a, with a red bow tie on. Um, uh, what was that again? I'm, I'm sorry, I wasn't concentrating on the question at all. Um, Changes in tone and theme through the years. Are you a teacher? No. <laughs> Changes in tone and theme through the Basically, years. Basically, you've, you've, you've had lots of reincarnations of Red Wolf with series to series. There's been splits, there's been changes. Has it felt like falling in the same set of shoes or, or is it different each time for you? I think each, each series has its own flavor. There's, there's no doubt about that. But, you know, once you get the, the, out, the uniform on and, and you know, the other guy, we're all in our costumes and we're all, you know, we've got the dialogue there with us. It, it, it's, it is the same, same set of shoes. It's like putting on a comfy old jumper, do you know what I mean? It's, um, you know, once we're once the posse are together and, and, and we crack on with the, the banter, then yeah, it, it, of course it, it always feels like dwarf. But yeah, there are with each series there are going to be changes, but you don't really notice those um, really, uh, if I'm honest. Um, what a little bullshit that was. <laughs> um, <laughs> I hope that's. I can't, I'm gonna, that's a question I have to sort of think about for a bit. You know, I think well, there have been changes, but there's many changes that happen outside, you know, not with us. You know, it's changes like change of direction, maybe back in the, the 90s. That, but, you know, we, we just, you know, at the end of the day, we've got the sets, we've got the scripts, which are usually first class, and it's up to us to bring them to life. And so our, our, our task is always that. And you know whatever's going on around us, you know, has no real bearing on, on what we've got to do. And I have a question from the gentleman here at the front. Uh, okay. uh, there's a question from Chris. Have you considered putting a name in a hat for Top Gear presenter? <laughs> I know you've done programmes before, um, car programmes, I know you have Retrohead, I think, if I'm right. 
Yeah, no, you're right. I've done lots of uh, engineering and some heritage shows before, um, and a lot of people have said, you know, would you ever have considered doing Top Gear if you were offered? And, you know, for me, Top Gear is Jeremy Clarkson, Richard Hammond, and James May. And the chemistry between those three was just brilliant, you know? Even people who, I mean, I'm a car enthusiast, an old classic car enthusiast, and my wife now loathes cars, <laughs> not only because she sees me sort of fiddling around with them all, you know, a lot of the time. She doesn't, she doesn't loathe them, that's completely wrong, she doesn't loathe them, she's certainly what she does like, you know, but, um, you know, cars are, she's not a car enthusiast, but yet she used to love Top Gear when the chem, you know, when those three were presenting it, because you didn't really need to like cars to enjoy that program. And that was the joy of it. It was also a sort of the only valve, if you like, for, you know, not, you know, for sort of anti-political correctness, if you like. And that was what made the show so good. Um, and it seems to me that the first excuse the BBC had of, of, of you know, ending their relationship with the, the present, that presenting team, and namely the main man, they did it. And, and, and how you could ever think they were going to reinvent it and, and make it as, as watchable was beyond me. Uh, so I would never have done it. You know, I'd never have said, oh yes, I'll do Top Gear. You know, a brand new car program, you know, about mainly old cars. Yes, I would do that. But um, no, no the, that was all about those three presenters. And um, they would never, ever, I mean, Chris Evans is, is fine on radio two in the morning, <laughs> you know, if you listen to that sort of thing. He was, he was good, you know, in his early days on, when he, he did various things, you know, and, and he's done some TV shows that have been successful. Um, but, you know, I don't think you could ever, anyone could ever replace uh, Jeremy Clarkson. And we've got time for one final question from this young lady here. Sorry, but how do you feel about replacing Mary Berry, though? <laughs> <laughs> Again, <laughs> it's not a job for me. Yeah, never um, been. I've never baked a cake in my entire life. But she has. Uh, you no, know, I'm still wondering what, how Paul Hollywood feels. You know, sort of being the only one who's gone with the money. <laughs> Rich. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Um, but money isn't everything. But it helps. Sorry. If you could bring one character back from in any of the series, what character would it be? I think Elvis was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, I wanted you to answer that more fully. Oh, why? Just because I like listening to the sound of your voice. <laughs> I love it. Female Holly, I'd point <laughs> Not now. Um, Come on, Ellie. I'm just trying to see what it looked like on that screen. Give me a bit quick. <laughs> 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 oh, shit. That's partly why yeah, I thought, I don't know, I partly thought, you know, God, the size of tellies now, HD, laser screen, I'm quite glad not to be on the square. I'm going to do it in the mirror. Carry on, I'll just. <laughs> So we'll take a picture and show her and show her how to do it. I haven't brought my hairdressers with me. Sorry. <laughs> you, you, if I had a phone that could take a photograph, I'd take it. <laughs> I'm sure someone out there will show you this afternoon. That you look good. Please join me in your own massive round of applause to the brilliant Chris Barry. And don't forget, we're going to watch this tomorrow on Day Night, Thursday night at 9 pm. And if you missed the last the episode that airs this week, it is on the UK TV Play website where you can catch it up with, I think, episode 120, which is now available.
And there is a mobile app if you have it, an Android and iOS available, an official one at 199 as well.